from the newsroom at news.com.au. G'day, I'm Andrew Bucklow and this is the latest from the newsroom. It's Tuesday the 17th of August. US President Joe Biden has blamed the Afghani government and military for the Taliban's swift conquest of the country. Mr Biden said he was deeply saddened by the situation in Afghanistan, but did not regret his decision to end America's involvement with all troops set to withdraw from the country by September 11. I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. To Victoria, and a curfew is now in effect in Melbourne. Under the policy, all non-essential movement between 9pm and 5am is banned. Yesterday, Premier Daniel Andrews was adamant that curfews work. However, an infectious diseases expert from ANU has claimed there is no evidence that curfews make a difference in stopping the spread of COVID. Meanwhile, dozens of guests who attended an engagement party in Melbourne have been handed big fines. The 69 people who attended the party in Caulfield will have to pay $5,500 dollars each. At least one of the party goers was COVID positive. To sport now, AFL team North Melbourne has called out a former player for making a racist comment on social media. Now the player, whose identity has been withheld by the club, made an offensive comment about former Collingwood star Haritia Lamumba. The Kangaroos have revoked the former player's past players association membership and have urged him to contact Lamumba to apologise. A woman has filed a lawsuit in the US claiming that Bob Dylan sexually abused her when she was 12 years old. The lawsuit alleges the legendary singer applied her with drugs and alcohol and abused her multiple times in his hotel room back in the 1960s. Dylan's lawyer said the claim is untrue and will be vigorously defended. And finally, the Blue Wiggle Anthony Field has assured fans he is still alive after a death hoax on the weekend. A Wikipedia entry claimed the entertainer died on Sunday. Now, Field wrote on social media that he has died a few times on stage over the years, but is still very much alive and kicking. If you want news.com to the year with fewer ads and member awards, get news.com.au premium today at news.com.au forward slash premium membership. That's it from the newsroom. I'll be back in the afternoon with another update. Your update from news.com.au.